is a slightly unusual common iliac aneurysm involving the left common iliac artery uh, because as you will see there's an occlusion uh, in the common iliac uh, there's large collateral which comes off you'll see it right here <clears throat> and yeah it reconstitutes distally uh, but the aneurysm's over four centimeters and the plan was to try to exclude this and embolize the internal iliac on the left. Before you do that, you always make sure there's a good internal iliac on the opposite side and warm the patient. There's a small chance of buttock claudication. So the plan was to approach this retrograde uh, and anti-grade. Uh, you can see the sauce omni catheters in the bottom of the aorta. Here we've got access to the groin um, and we've got a short sheath. It's probably a mistake. She just put a long sheath in to start with. Uh, we're kind of fishing through this with an angle glide wire and a burn. Uh, really didn't get anywhere with that. It just kind of coils up inside the aneurysm. For this reason, we opted to put a apt sheath in from the contralateral side, in this case, the right side. Uh, allows you to recurve this and seat it down uh, on the bifurcation gives you uh, a little bit more pushability so um, can't really take it much further on the left side um, usually put a stiffer wire in to advance the aptus sheath and then recurve the aptus sheath as you'll see in the next segment So the wire's already down, but that's not going to support it. Uh, you have to deflect it up the aorta and then bring the up the sheath in, pull out the dilator. That allows you to reform the sheath with a handle. It gives you control, it seats pretty nicely. Not really good for tracking very well. It's the only problem uh, with the sheath, but it certainly gives you a nice angle. Uh, same setup, burn and an angle glide wire from the opposite side. And again, you're kind of basically blindly fishing. Um, should add that the marks that we're looking at are fusion marks. We, we almost routinely fuse any preoperative CT scan. And so the upside down uh, V check mark is the aortic bifurcation. Um, it shows you the blind cul de sac of the proximal common iliac artery and the cul de sac distally of the uh, external iliac artery. Uh, later on, you'll see we'll actually add in the marks where they take off the internal iliac artery. These are very helpful. Again, not really. You certainly get in the aneurysm. You just can't really find that distant target. And so the, the wire distal is already in the internal, so you know exactly where that is. Um, there's a little circle at the origin. The internal looks like a straight line here because we're orthogonal to it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is going to end up bringing in a longer sheath from the left common femoral artery now you can see it uh, we've pushed up a little bit more into the aneurysm when you see these fusion marks moving it's because we're moving the the image intensifier to get a different angle here we haven't taken the overlay off yet and then we're essentially working obviously having the catheter in there is pretty nice and you, you see the wire goes on up the aorta again you want to always look at the end of the wire the wire should be moving freely um, not curling up anywhere uh, you always confirm by injecting a little bit. First of all, you aspirate blood, reassuring, and then secondly, inject dye. And we've confirmed, of course, that we're endoluminal. So that's step one. Now, we do want to embolize the internal iliac artery. That'd be pretty difficult to do from the left groin. It's a lot easier to do from the contralateral side. So here we've crossed the occlusion uh, with our sheath. Um, we have deployed our end snare in this case, and we're going to snare the wire from the other side. And we missed it. So you pull the wire back, re-advance the wire, close the ends here, and it'll be pretty obvious there we've clearly got it. What we're gonna do now is use this to pull the wire from the right side down through the occlusion. That'll uh, allow us to uh, reintroduce the dilator for the aptus sheath. We'll cross the occlusion and embolize the origin of the internal iliac artery from the right side. Can you do it from the left side? Yeah, just a little bit more challenging to make that make that angle. All of this has been speeded up about uh, two times. Uh, really try and get this whole procedure uh, in here. <clears throat> so we're going to add a second wire from the left side up the aorta. There you see it going so that we will use that actually for a place in the VBX. 
now what we're going to do is re-advance the dilator for the after sheath and marry the tips of these two sheaths together and then just pull it back down into the external iliac artery. So there's a sheath coming up, the, the tip now, now allows us to pull the whole thing. Now we already pulled the left femoral sheath down uh, and we're going to advance the aptus sheath over that wire into the external iliac artery. We will reform the curve to some extent, angle it towards that little line that you see, that's the origin of the internal iliac artery and the fusion marks. We've got a burn and a glide wire now. These are usually pretty easy to, to, to cannulate. So there we are down in the internal iliac. What you really want to see is where the bifurcation of the internal iliac is. The target is to try and lay the embolization coils or plug, really depending upon to what your, your choice is there. We're too far in, we're going to pull back and, and try to lay those coils just short of that, maintain the patency of the cross pelvic collaterals. So that's our overlay in place. We're going to start putting the coils in. Again, the way you size coils, if there's a six millimeter vessel, we'll put in eight millimeter coils. Uh, usually in a situation like this, what you don't want to do is have these coils hanging out into the axial circulation, although in this situation probably doesn't matter too much. You can see that the coil has not reformed. Now it's reformed. That's what you want to see. And so we then pack this. So we tend to start off with um, short coils. So you can, yeah, let you judge, you know, either how many you're going to need or, or what you're going to do. And again, the, the, these some of these coils are recapturable. We tend to, oh, hey, we wouldn't use coils that are not recapturable now because uh, it allows you to kind of reposition, pull them back and reposition them. Um, the coil base has then been disconnected. Then we're going to put in you know, a series of other coils. There's no point in using excessively long coils and then find that they're too long. Now, we've actually already positioned the VBX in there. It's kind of nice to have that just in case there's a problem with the coil. And you got to pack these things pretty tightly. The last thing we need is to see the back perfusion occurring into this aneurysm. So you can see the coil coming up from the other side, the coil's being deployed. It's probably a little further than is ideal. I really didn't need to be that aggressive with it, especially when you start packing this. It tends to push that coil pack a little bit further forward. And then the last coil is going to go in. And once we're happy with the coiling, it'll just be a matter of lining the VBX up with the origin of the uh, left common iliac artery. Again, you'd oversize this. I think this is a nine. Uh, I don't know. I think the length is probably 54. There's the last coil going in. You can inject some dye and see if you're happy with the occlusion that's occurred. Yeah, that looks pretty good. A little further in than is ideal. So now we're going to position the, the VBX. Uh, you can see the back end of it's inside the sheath. You want to make sure you pull the sheath back far enough. And the sheath has been retracted. So now all you got to worry about is the tag in the origin of the common iliac cord. The nice thing here is you've got that a mark from the from the other side where the sheath was added into the uh, overlay. Balloons inflated, deflated. Always make sure it's balloons deflated before you take the catheter out. Then you're going to shoot a completion. In this case, we shot it retrograde from the sheath. And it looked like there was a little bit of leak coming alongside the proximal end there. So we opted to go back in with a bigger balloon, uh, in this case a 10 balloon, and just to touch up that proximal end.
the rest of it really looks pretty good. So, Bloom being brought back up. Which is perfectly positioned. And that's the balloon. Just to tag up that proximal end. And you shoot a completion engram, and then we essentially um, thought the case was done. So it's a fairly standard way of approaching it. The only thing that's really different in this situation is the fact that there was this kind of strange occlusion inside the aneurysm, which is uh, not something that you see very often. That added to the complexity of um, crossing and, and, and embolizing. Mm -hmm. And the final stop. Look good. Thank you. Mm -hmm.